Labor prepares to take on big tobacco again. Health Minister Mark Butler knows what it's like to fight big tobacco. As a junior minister to Nicola Roxon in 2011, he had a front row seat when she as health minister took on the multinationals to introduce plain packaging. Butler remembers the fight as a legal and rhetorical onslaught from an industry with deep pockets and powerful friends. Within hours of announcing our policy, two tobacco companies declared they would challenge the decision in the high court, he says. More than a decade later, he wants to take on the sector again. The new Labour government hopes to put its own stamp on Australia's tobacco control legacy with reforms that include streamlined standards for cigarette packages and individual warning labels on each product. But Butler's biggest battle won't be against cigarettes, the latest Australian Bureau of Statistics figures show the adult daily smoking rate declined to 10.1% in December, just shy of the government's target of 10% by 2025. This time around, it's the runaway vaping market that appeals to the tobacco industry and has the health sector most concerned. We know our renewed tobacco and vaping reforms will have, their, opponents but we are up for the challenge, Butler says. He has asked the Therapeutic Goods Administration to probe whether the government should tighten border controls, create a regulated source of products and strengthen standards around e-cigarettes, also known as vapes. Regulations introduced by former Health Minister Greg Hunt in late 2021 established Australia's regulatory framework for vapes, they were only to be available as a tool to stop smoking, with a prescription from a GP, and under-the-counter sales were prohibited. But a black market has flourished. Ask at many corner stores and you'll be presented with a list of e-cigarettes from Chinese brands, offering single-use devices costing between $20 and $40 in flavors ranging from cola to a hybrid of pomegranate and cherry. Talk to families, and stories abound of teenagers hooked on nicotine, or teachers trying to stamp out vaping in school toilets. NSW Health last year reported the number of 16 to 24-year-olds who said they vaped jumped from 4.5% in 2020 to 11% in 2021. Figures from Roy Morgan put the number of regular Australian users at 1.2 million. With thousands of vapes swapping hands in Australia every day, the fight over both regulations and the public health narrative has escalated. In submissions to the TGA's consultation, which closed this week, the health sector warned Australia was sleepwalking into a public health disaster while vaping advocates said the devices helped people quit smoking and were being unfairly demonised. Retailers pushed to sell vapes from behind the counter so both they and the government could cash in. Tobacco companies, which produce their own vaping products, also stand to gain from an expansion into the Australian consumer market, which has been otherwise dominated by illegal imports from China. British American Tobacco launched the Responsible Vaping Australia movement shortly before Butler announced his crackdown in November, with the support of tobacconists and retailers including the Australian Lottery and Newsagents Association. A BAT spokesman did not specifically answer questions about whether it would fight the government's cigarette reforms or if it was seeking a greater foothold in the Australian vaping market, but said the movement's purpose was to support adult consumers, responsible retailers and industry associations who promote the sensible regulation of vaping products. Responsible Vaping Australia is advocating to end the black market trade of nicotine vaping products and to ensure Australian adult consumers are able to purchase products in a responsible and regulated way, he said. Bad and fellow multinational tobacco company Philip Morris did not make submissions to the TGA, their spokespeople said, but Imperial Brands did. A spokesman said Imperial encouraged the government to develop balanced regulation that supported tobacco harm reduction and acknowledged vapes had a reduced risk. The current regulatory framework has contributed to the significant and growing illicit vape market, he said. It is our belief that adult smokers are unlikely to transition to potentially less harmful products if they perceive them as more expensive, less appealing or more difficult to buy and use. The Australian Association of Convenience Stores, which counts the three tobacco companies among its 100 members, also called for vapes to be regulated behind the counter like cigarettes, as did MGA independent retailers. The convenience store group's head, Theo Fokair, who is a former BAT executive, has been seeking to overturn the government's prescription vaping model since he became chief executive in January 2021. The same year, the lobby group also hired former Philip Morris executive Ben Meredith as its full-time strategy and policy advisor. Market research conducted for the industry group by Roy Morgan estimated 6.1% of Australia's population vaped each month, with 88% of products purchased through the black market. The lobby's argument is that enforcement has failed and illicit trade can only be reined in with a consumer model that includes regulations around retail sales, product standards and age verification. Our concern is that the TGA is going to double down on a model they've already said has failed. If they do that, we'll still be having this conversation in 18 months, Folkair told this masthead.
but the pro-vaping campaign